<laughs> I also had like adjust my appearance so I didn't have any <laughs> recording in progress. Okay, this <laughs> was We are now recording. All right. Um, oh, yours is. We are getting feedback. You're going to have to so go I out. I think what you have to do, Mark, is go out. How about that? Yeah, absolutely. She's fine now, I think. No. No, it's not. It's a good one. Just exit out of that. Or oh, here's one. Okay, click through. And then see if there's a. No, no, no. Oh. Reviewing. Okay. Now, what is this? What it asks you. Try again. Join. Okay, well, I can just quit this thing. Is it you? You don't no, no, really have to be. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Thanks. nobody else is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We're causing ourselves some trouble. I'm not that worried about it. I'm just trying to get a team lit. All right. Oh, zoom in on Mark. Yeah, make sure the mark is seen. The plaid guys. <laughs> no, 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 this is the plaid table. <laughs> Should we do the top button and undo the rest of it? <laughs> there you go. All right. Um, let's start the regular meeting of the Planning and Zoning Commission for November 1st. Um, 2022, it's uh, 636. Um, Pledge of Allegiance. I'll stand. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> and we Roll we'll call. Please. Okay, let's go around, <coughs> around the room. Mark, i oh, first. Here. Melissa Waters. Here. Shirley Powell. Here. Mark Tucker. Here. Linda Robinson. Here. Dan Heaney. Here. David Dowdy. Here. And Spoke. Yes. Okay. This is the point where um, any of you can disclose um, any actual or perceived conflicts of interest with anything on the agenda tonight. Does anybody have anything to disclose? Okay, hearing none, we'll move on to the next item, which is approval of the agenda. Um, and I would like to make a motion that we um, Add an, an item. Guess maybe it'd be replace the adjournment with ten and move the adjournment to eleven. Um, uh, just discussion about the um, dark sky issue that's come up. So we'll need a motion in a second. Please. Motion that we approve the agenda with the addition of the agenda item for a discussion of the dark sky issue. Great. Okay. I would add that there be no decision. Yes. Yeah. Okay. 
interesting discussion. Yes. This discussion. All right. All in favor of the agenda with the amendment? Say aye. Any opposed? Okay, so the agenda is approved. Um, then we'll need a motion and a second. For approval of the consent agenda, which includes the minutes of the October 4th regular planning and zoning meeting last month. Motion and a second, please. Thanks for the motion. Thank you, Mark. Second? I'll second. Thanks, Shirley. Um, all in favor of approving the consent agenda say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, the consent agenda has been approved. Um, now we'll move on to item eight, which is staff Six. updates. Six. I skipped six. Oh! Hmm. I don't know why it's I didn't notice it. <laughs> Wasn't it? Doesn't it? Does, does six usually come? Where does six usually come? Does that come before the consent agenda or after? I'm not sure. That's okay, I'm sorry. sorry. Anyway, <laughs> all right, now we're going to like, go back to the item six. And we have a public participation section, five minutes per person. Um, it looks like we have might have one person. <laughs> I'll go first. <laughs> Are we going to loan you a plaid shirt? You'd like to. <laughs> I usually do. <laughs> okay. You can see my name and everything. Yeah, please do. State your name and your address. Linnea Peterson. I reside at 402 mm -hmm. Melbourne Avenue. Mm -hmm. um, community member, business member. Uh, so I'm here to, tonight. Um, to ask PNC in regards to the new LED lights that have been installed to please reach out to the town and to the town manager, town board members to stop until there's further research done. Um, these lights are intrusive, <laughs> obnoxious, I mean it's just beyond belief. Um, my daughter Claire and I drove around town one evening taking photos. Have any of you seen them? I mean, Mark has to live next door to one. I mean, if Mark wanted to go out in his backyard and stare at the sky, he's not able to. Um, it's a concern of mine for the ambiance, the beauty of Dolores. Talking with Claire, we were coming home one night from Cortez, talking about how you reach skyline, especially on a, a winter's night when it's snowing or maybe there's fog, and you see the, the beautiful orange glow from Dolores, and then you drop into the valley and see the snow falling with the orange lights, gold lights that we have now. Um, Turning those into stark white LEDs is not the answer. And maybe there's more research that needs to be done. Different light spectrums, different whatever. Um, but these new lights are not the answer. And my request would be turn them off. And we just can't go down this path. Um, I don't think it's healthy. Um, <laughs> Oh my gosh, if you go down Central, right behind the Ponderosa, uh, one of my former employees lives in a two-story home. I took pictures from the highway across the parking lot. I mean, it looks like his house is going to be in a movie set. It is so bright. He had to contact his um, landlord to purchase blackout lights. Now. My employee now, Tom, um, has to dry shades as soon as that light comes on. You know, it's, it's going to make us prisoners of our own home, that we have to draw the shades as soon as those lights come on. We're going to look like an interstate rest stop. It's going to ruin Dolores. 
It's going to ruin people's health, the health of habitat in this area. No one will want to be here. No visitors. And it's, to me, it's such disrespect to the people who live here now to have such blinding lights installed. I mean, what are we afraid of? That's, you know, what, what's the driving force behind these big bright lights? That's what I'd like to know. And I've had that question posed to me in the store. People have asked me, well, why? Why is the Lord starting to do this? Can anyone answer to that? that it would be nice to know. Um, a little information. But we can, well, we can, I don't know if it, right now is the time. <coughs> uh, I think later when we add this to the discussion, we can talk a little bit more about that. But, yeah. yeah. So, and then, um, <laughs> there's, you know, it's, it's going, if those lights are installed, it's year-round. So no one can go sit out in their backyards at nighttime. Um, and a town board member was asked, well, what about the dark sky? Because we were all under the impression there's dark sky to, you know, protect Dolores. And he was like, well, yeah, that's, you know, 20 feet and above is dark sky. So apparently there's a little confusion as to the definition of dark sky. And I was trying to find something um, on the town website about any um, ordinance policy. And the only thing that I could find, and I honestly didn't have a lot of time to, to do a ton of research on the website, but it was from um, Comprehensive of 1997. Comprehensive. Um, comprehensive plan. Comprehensive plan, yes, thank you. Um, and in there it stated there would be respect, um, conserve, and to complement the rural and natural setting. And that was 1997. If it's changed, we need to revert back to 1997. Thanks for listening. Thank you. Okay. We can discuss this a little bit more under item 10 after we get to items eight and nine. All right, item eight. Um, we need, uh, I guess, 8.1. We have the housing task force um, of meeting of October 25th update from Ann and David. Yeah, so we met with the County Right Foundation. I believe no, we met with rural homes. Rural homes. Yeah. Rural homes. The manager is the previous owner. Right. They did a presentation to us on the projects that they've got going on in Ridgeway and Northern. They have them in all three cities. Right. Um, they did a presentation. Um, they talked about the first steps of how they're going to be working with the town for the what they're calling affordable housing. Um, and so we had some technical difficulties with the uh, projector. So we only had to be able to look at the computer screens and printed out some handouts, so we were able to look at that from the handouts. Um, I believe that we're, basically it was just an introductory meeting. Um, they're gonna be looking at sites in town. The sites are gonna be looking at are on 19th Street, two sites there, um, the site behind. Um, uh, I'm not sure they're gonna look at it. I think on our behalf. They'll be looking at it for possible development through the school. Right. And, I, and then also the uh, out of town, the old Forest Service lot up, up river. <coughs> and so they're going to be making a presentation to the board. 
um, and the housing task force on what they think is going to be the best choice for this project and then the steps that we would have to follow to make that to happen um, and then can you think of anything else that was to me it was just basically it's a, basically it was an introductory meeting do you remember dan so and melissa was there right so i think what our next meeting will be is uh the project manager his name is david bruce he's going to be looking at how the sites that he's been um, tasked with will fit with our land use code and he'll have he'll be deciding which ones are going to be um, that he'll hire the geotech uh, services for and um, in december maybe like <coughs> six weeks from the date of that meeting about is when they're going to present those their, that data their analysis of that uh, uh, like a pre-proposal you know they're doing basically he's doing a, a, a book review you know what's on the books you know, right code what kind of utility situations are there all those kind of things to identify sites that they think would be most feasible to yeah feasibility for. study that's what he called yeah, feasibility study. Mm -hmm. Each lock will be a feasibility study. Mm -hmm. And what's the next? It's not scheduled. Yet. So nothing when they, scheduled. When they have something, yeah, when they have that study <laughs> okay. done and ready to say, we think we want you guys to look at this for site. Mm -hmm. That's going to happen. <coughs> oh, it's summer. Okay. Yeah. So, would it be some kind of public involvement? Comment on that as part of the process? I'm sure, but that's probably not the, the public part right there because it will just be like, here's your options. Right. You've got three Technically, options. here's your options. And then, yeah, so rural, the rural, the task force and the board will say, we want you to develop for this site. Right. And then I think once everything is kind of um, prioritized as far as sites, <coughs> then we'll look at you know, public participation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So David, are you going to be involved in some of the nitty gritty on building codes and some of that stuff? Oh yeah, yeah, there? absolutely. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I will be involved in, in the hat from the from the zoning standpoint as well as from the your commission will be involved too right. with, uh, especially when the notice to proceed you know for the development really becomes public then because you know we get all this groundwork done we get the site plan finished i'm then asking we'll start, then we'll start for that there be public comment before notice to proceed i mean that's kind of it's already the bulldozers are already on the way. We don't get it scheduled like no, that. No, that definitely will happen. This yeah. is a preliminary or a feasibility study, and then after that, there'll be know, a design they phase. They will be like, these are this, this site or these yeah. two sites or whatever is feasible to do these things at, and then the public participation. Right. Because mm -hmm. so, I'll be honest, I've got some hard work with the school parking or yeah, the old portion of the parking. Right. So, so I think what they're going to do is they're, they're, they're kind of, in my opinion, they're going to come up with a, you know, an op option one, two, three, four, and you know, option one will be this is the one that they're recommending because of the following reasons, right? And I think that's how they're going to approach it. And what I kind of understood from him, Mark, was, you know, how we keep on talking about this fast track and we got to get this stuff done. He's what I kind of felt was since we're just trying to do one of these tracks that. The fast track thing is not as necessary as if there was a giant development going on. Okay. So, well, and the other thing is, I like I think the first one needs to be done right. Yeah. So, so we can promote. The he kind of he kind of pushed aside the the fast tracking thing. He said thought that that wasn't as necessary in our situation for Dolores. Is that what you guys kind of heard too? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. We're we're in a little more unique situations than some of those others. Um, as far as um, we have some property that 
probably is not going to get developed because of the developmental costs. And as he said, the more that we have to put into the development before we start coming out of the ground, the more that adds to the cost of these structures. Yeah, that makes sense. And so they're looking at, you know, they're going to look at which ones are going to be optimal. And I think that, I personally think they're going to come down to one or two that are going to be like, these are the ones that really work and the other ones are kind of like outliers. Well, I'm not sure how we, uh, the town, would be involved with the school property because it's identified and the school wants to participate, but I'm not sure that they don't have to go through their own separate process for their own site development. Yeah, I'm, 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 not, I'm not worried about the process right now other than the school would have to still have a public process. There will be a public component. Yeah, no matter what direction we're going. Yeah. Yes. And for sure, with the um, with the zoning, a lot of it's going to have to have a public process just to become a compliant process, a compliant project. Right. So, I mean, well, I got the impression that there's a possibility that none of those sites would be feasible. So I mean, you know, like in terms of. Yeah. yeah, don't, don't get me wrong, I'm not against any of this stuff. I just I have some concerns on it. I'm not sure that, I'm just more concerned about the process than the results. Right? No, they're not, there's no way. It wouldn't, it wouldn't happen that they would just, you know, there would be no public input. This is the feasibility study. It's actually not, you know, like they're just going to use drone footage. And, I mean, they're not even going to be out here. You know, they're going to look at the site plans, they're going to look at the layout, they're going to look at where the utilities are. They're gonna Code. They're going to look at other codes and all those things and then say, based on this evaluation, how many miles of yeah, infrastructure right. have to get put in for this yeah. site and this how much grading and this site comes fell and this type of yeah. development. This would be this, this would be this, this one would make, be, make these cost prohibitive, or this would, you know, this doesn't have the right, you know. Well, I understand it's not a public process up to a point when we make a decision. Go for well, right. okay. well, well, I think that at, at some point, like in this early planning, it's just like how how can this be feasible? I think there'll be an opportunity for uh, probably the the board as well as um, the task force to visit Norwood to see it actually being created. From there, it's going to be an uphill battle to sell the public on it, to sell the community. As I mean, it's going to be it's going to take a lot longer as an outreach program, I think, than it is going to be uh, to plan a construction project. Right. I think I understand that. I just want to make sure that that's one of the nuts and bolts that's in the process. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. And, and they they also said that they're they're looking at really narrowing it down to one site because the geotechnical aspect of this, you know, they're going to be they're going to be. Um, drilling a site, they're gonna so they're gonna try to find which site is the best because they're gonna have some money invested in drilling to determine, you know, what is the geotechnical aspect of the foundations. Um, and they want that to be most relevant. Yes, yeah. and so they're they're really gonna. He he can ask, do you think we're gonna have two sites to look at? And he said no, we're gonna end up with one site mm -hmm. because of the the drilling and the geotechnical aspect yeah. of this because it's gonna be expensive. It's going to eat up a lot of so, the So they're going, to, they're going to come to one site and say, this is the site that we recommend. And they're going to tell us, here's the following reasons. They'll have a presentation on that. But nothing will be done um, as far as turning dirt <laughs> or you know building right. until there's a public aspect. Yeah, it's going to go through an entire process. And um, it's actually going to go through the planning and zoning as well. Uh, we, don't we, so, have, we have public hearing for that or just approval? I think we'll, oh, like, I'm visually visualizing kind of how we did the um, the land use development. We'll have stakeholders who will be invited and the public will be invited. And then from there, we'll have a, a period of time where comments can be submitted to the town um, on, based on information that they, these, participants get. It's, it's quite likely that there'll be outreach to um, any adjacent or vicinity area land holders yes. right, um, to make sure that they're 
invited to some kind of public comment meeting about that. A thousand well people. Before even, you know, the GP is involved. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm glad to hear that. I mean, it just seems like they were moving forward and not a lot of detail. So, yeah, enough said. Well, I'm and glad. you know, <clears throat> the land use code is pretty restrictive, even though we did make it a little more flexible. It's still pretty restrictive what you can do in certain zones. No, that we have very good that zoning way. issues as well. That's what Elizabeth's working on. Yeah. So. Well, we want to be able to incentivize affordable housing where it meet where sites are desirable for that. Right? Well, yeah, and but we've talked about it a lot. I don't know if we've come to a consensus, but we've talked about a lot of areas where we think we could be flexible. Um, I have a question. So, if the Forest Service parking lot belongs to the school, is that correct? Yep. So, do do all these parcels um, get evaluated equally? You know, the town parcels and the school parcels, or does does the school have its own track for getting affordable housing separate than the town? No, well, that's what. And was saying that we're not really, I mean, it shouldn't be, the school property shouldn't be part of the deal because that's their own deal. Right. Okay. If, they, if they're going to sign into this, sign on to this, then they're going to have their. They have to have their own yeah. process for their sites. And I can tell you that, you know, looking at, looking at the sites, that we have four sites. We uh -huh. have the, even though it's the schools, we have yeah. the parking lot back here. Right. We have the two lots on 19th Street. Mm -hmm. One on the hillside, one on Central or Railroad. And then we have the Forest Service lot up river. The, I mean, it, just looking at this logistically and logically, right? The Forest Service land up river, there's no sewer lateral up there. There's, there's a water line, but it's too small. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be a very expensive um, improvement to get that development going. <clears throat> and then, it's on the C dot highway, and so there's that whole C dot step. Access and egress, and they could they could require AC acceleration, deceleration lines, AC mm -hmm. deceleration lines. They, they, the guy said that he's seen those cost a million dollars. Yes, and so I can tell you right now that if any of that comes in, in, in my mind, that site's not even possible. Mm -hmm. So then you look at the school lot, right? Number one, it's it's paved, and so it has a drainage issue through there. So it, it, it's, I was over there just today, and there's a drainage issue through there. So that, that's going to require a very intense site development program. You take the lots at 19th, both of them, right? They're, they're developable, at, developable as they are. They have water and sewer right there. They're, I mean, so in my, in my opinion, as a, as a contractor, building code official, those sites are probably going to be the ones they look at. And I think they're probably going to look at the one that's on Hillside as a better option than the one that's on Railroad. Because of, it has two roads of access, okay? The one on, on Railroad has one access, because you're not accessing it off the highway. So it just, it, everything kind of points to that lot as being the lot that's going to be the one that, you know, I mean, I, I feel pretty confident that's where we're going to end up with this. But they're the experts. They know all the ins and outs. Um, and I mean, I don't know what the geotechnical drilling is going to find. They may find something under there that's like, oh, this is all solid bedrock under here. I mean, I don't know. But those kind of things will be determined by this company we are consulting with. So. Is the 19th and Hillside, is that the bigger lot? So they're, I think they're both 15,000, aren't they? I don't think the river, the railroad one is, because it's not as wide. It's not seventy five. Okay. Like, I thought Kim was telling me they're the same size, and I, I, I didn't think, think so either. I think the one on the hillside is actually one hundred fifty by one fifty, and the other one is seventy five. <clears throat> it, it may be the the one on hillside is fifteen thousand square feet. I've I've taken that one and looked at it from a development standpoint as far as what could you put on there and have the setbacks met have the parking met, 
have additional parking, have the storage part met, have everything met without having to issue a variance or an exception. And that lot works very well um, for this type of development. Well, we are paying them $30,000 to do all this, so we'll let them come up. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, theirs is going to be, yeah. you know, be based on actual finance. And what kind of buildings? Not speculation. Because right. they have to buy from them and factor in the buildings. Right. Yeah. 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 So they're engaging with the manufacturer. Fading West. Yeah, with the manufacturer. Fading West, yeah. And there's only certain designs that they'll probably have to install. Hmm. Okay. All right. Code enforcement update, David. Okay. So uh, I'm just going to go through everything. So uh, this is what's going to be presented to the board uh, next week. week after next. Um, so this last month, I did 24 phone and in-person consultations. I did seven construction inspections of permits that have been issued. Uh, I did one. I did seven business inspections, and then I did one short-term rental inspection. So we have now we have another short-term rental. It's the um, 501 Central. It's the old apothecary. It's the one right on the corner of the old drugstore. Used to be the, a bank at some point in history, I think. In fact, that's what they're calling it. Is ye, ye old ye old bank? Um, well, not the bookstore. Do what? I'm not calling it the bookstore. Bank <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> um, yeah. Those are so old school too, books, yeah. <laughs> there was internet technology that I worked on this last month, um, special projects that didn't have a report of those. To the compliance issues, so um, you've all been told that we had all the different letters that were sent out to the, to the folks in town. Um, I don't have any further compliance other than 8th Street now, and you've all seen that, that's all been cleaned up. And actually they're turning that now. It was a single family house, then it was a restaurant, then it was a duplex, now it's going back to a single family house. So they're actually removing some of the walls inside and making it one big house. <coughs> um, and that that lot, which is a parking lot, is owned by the same Yes. It's the they same own lot. That, or, yes. It's, okay. Yeah. All right. Just clear. And she was talking about I haven't seen any plans on it, but she was talking about um, replacing some of the sidewalk around there and then putting a fence up all the way out to the sidewalk. Okay. So I don't know if they're going to do that. They did not submit that with this plan that they've submitted. So I, I don't know. Um, one of the uh, compliance issues we're working with is right over on 4th Street. And Ken and I went over this this week. The gentleman has cleaned up somewhat, um, but there's still issues there. And we're going to be working with the landowner, not the tenant on what else has to be done there. Um, it, it needs some more work. Um, as far as vehicles, um, there by Melissa's house, there was the 1956 flatbed truck that he removed and then he replaced it with a Chevrolet Blazer that has expired plates. So <laughs> I'm working with the sheriff right now to get, he's gonna be issuing it has to go for so many days, and he's going to issue a notice that it has to be removed. The gentleman put something else there. <laughs> well, the trailer was there at expired plates too, but they have put a temporary tag on that it. trailer. Um, so, yeah. Um, and so that, as far as compliance, that's where we're at. Um, we've had pretty good compliance. I've still got probably. 15 properties that have not complied at all. Um, and at some point, you know, that the, the board will decide what they want to do with that. If they want to look into any more compliance with that or what direction they want to go. Um, at this point, we're not, I'm not pushing letters of do this or else, right? I've, I've given them opportunity to come into compliance. Um, anybody that contacts me, I had somebody contact me the other day probably four weeks or five weeks after I sent the letters out, I removed them from the non-compliant list to the compliant list because they did clean up their property. Um, we've had a lot of people that we've been working with because they cannot get, like the arborists are really busy right now. 
And so they can't get somebody to remove some of the tree limbs or branches that are the problem. So I've worked with them on, on that as well. Um, Sixth Street across from Marks, that the folks there, it took them, literally took them five weeks to get somebody to cut the limbs off that pine tree. Um, and, and they did, it's, it's cleaned up now. You can actually walk down the sidewalk and find the fire hydrant. So anyhow, so that's, that's where I'm at with compliance stuff. Um, I'll take questions if anybody has questions. <clears throat> yeah. yeah, I thought so. <laughs> so. Is there any incentive for property owners along Central to landscape between the pavement and the, the curb or the sidewalk where that? You want to replace the sidewalks? Is there any? You're disincentive. What? There's a disincentive for it. Well, I kind of wondered. It just it seemed like there ought to be some way to do something there. It just looks weedy and trashy, and it's it's. And I'm not trying to be a nosy neighbor. I walk up there every day to the post office, whatever. And it's like you put all that money into that, and I just just wonder if there's a way to get a. Something going. I don't know what it would be. Mulch it, yeah. some Roundup, and take care of it, and then reseed it. And I don't know. I just want to say that the original sidewalk plan uh, was to the curb, and it got amended to have the buffer zone for cars, homers, or something. Yeah, so it's farther out. So they put it back towns. where uh, they put it back where the original sidewalk was, and so there's the space between the sidewalk. And and, and maybe part of it, too, could be an education component to the public, because I've had a lot of people um, tell me that they felt that the town, you know, their property line, wherever their fence was, that's all they take care of. The alley was the, the main thing that people would tell me. Well, I don't take care of anything in the alley. That's not my problem. That's the town's. And so I had to explain to them that your property goes to the center of the alley. And so you are responsible to the center of the alley. On your side, and your neighbor on the other side is responsible to the center of the alley. Well, how about that little space between them? Because it is a little in a lot of spots. And so between that's between the sidewalk and the curb. Sure. So the that property is line is the back of the curb. That's well, the problem. I was thinking that it was the, to the side. I'm pretty sure the way our streets are and sidewalks are built, that the sidewalks are in the street right away. Hmm. Okay. Much mm -hmm. Typically, that's in what happens. It leads to the back of the curb or the front line. Yeah. So, is it town or not? It's town, but what we have in our ordinance about weeds and rubbish maintenance that's is the, to uh, the middle of the, the alley and municipal code, basically to the street. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's kind of undefined because some places have curbs and sidewalks, and some places just have. You know, where the gravel is. <laughs> <and the grass. laughs> gravel is. Yeah, I'm not trying to make a mountain. No, I heard as he was marking a lot about it. I was wondering about just the responsibility that is. Unfortunately, lots of times it's like this large. Yeah. There's not a lot you could do with that. I was, I was hoping somebody would start the bee, um, you know, like bee landscapes, um, bee friendly landscapes. But they, to get started, they have to be. Is there any kids in the high school that need projects for their community service? I mean, how you could sell it to them? Well, and right now the weeds are so uh, prevalent that they would outgrow the, the weeds. Well, yeah, you have to do something. Well, there's really not a lot you can do with that much space. Because, <laughs> like, literally, you can't really landscape. <laughs> well, <laughs> it, I mean, like if weeds are growing there, other things could grow too. I mean, yeah. It's all about defining, like, who cares. Maybe. Right. And, like, who's willing to do something about it. That's why I right. asked if you break it up. Well, if it's, if it's, it's not town, then, then there's a, that's an education piece. If it, if it is the responsibility of the homeowner to manage that, then that's an education piece. Because, honestly, I don't know. Well, I mean, you bring up an interesting point, Mark, about, like, is there an incentive? And it's like, you know, maybe there is. Why, you know, the 
beauty of your sidewalk, you know, area or that area out in front between the sidewalk and the, and the curb could be uh, point of pride that's recognized somehow by the town. Maybe there's a you know prize you get uh, free, you know, free uh, an additional cleanup or uh, maybe you get two months water bill discount or, or something like that. It's like, uh, so we get to ride at the front of the Escalante Days Parade. Right. Citizen of the Year. Yeah. Citizen of the yeah. Year. Sidewalk, sidewalk of the Year. Parade march. Again, I'm not trying to be the man telling what to do, but I think it's been there long enough and nothing's been done. No, I mean, and, and if you could incentivize people to take pride in that piece of public property, you didn't think it would go a lot, a lot further away than mandating that you have know, tears and you have to Yeah, I, yeah. Honestly, you didn't. Huh? You know, I thought it was town. <laughs> <laughs> and it's really hard to well, it's really hard to They were spraying it. So is it town or not? Because if the town was spraying it, that I thought it was town. Well, I wanna I wanna tell you what the town has to do sometimes is they have to do chores that otherwise should be delegated to the property owners. But the reason they have to do them is that they're out of control and you know, we have a process. We send you a letter, we give you a certain amount of time, and we say, oh, you didn't meet the deadline, and we said, no, we're going to send you another letter but it's, that we're going to enforce it, and then in 30 days we enforce it. And so the process for us to have the property owner be responsible is really unfriendly, and it's really long. It takes a long time. What if we just put, like you did in the last water bill, a little education note in there that says, I do. I communicate with you guys a lot in that water bill. Some people read it, some people don't. And maybe, I mean, so this is something, you know, Mark being on board, this is something we can bring to the board and, and as a concern, and maybe they yeah, have some. That's why they brought it up. You can start a committee. Sidewalk committee. You can have your orange vest. Stop sign. You can have some people come up with some designs and recommendations. <laughs> I don't want to do that. That's the whole reason. We've got the code right there. And you can have education sessions out on the street. I'll get you a top hat. And a top hat, yeah. Yeah. Get you a top hat. I'm not, I'm not the side interested in clean. The side <laughs> <one's> clean. <laughs> and we could do a public service <laughs> yes, announcement. Don't be <laughs> and he's going to sing. And play. <laughs> His band will get out there. Wow. <laughs> 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 Sounds like we're just going. Sounds like we're just Maybe, maybe Mark could, you know, give people like, 15% off of their beer. <laughs> <laughs> One beer. Mark Sidewalk Tucker. <laughs> no, no, no. Mark something strip Tucker. It's very nice and clean. I do. It is Mark. It's very nice. That's the answer. It's the too. I, I did learn something in all this compliance stuff. <laughs> Because I look at something and think, okay, by code, it means this and this and this and this and this and it's a nuisance. And other people look at it and go, that's not a nuisance. I think that's nice looking. I like that look. Yeah, there's a like, difference. Hmm. Yeah, there's a difference. Yeah. All right. All right. Yeah. Let's, okay. Um, all right, number, item number nine, discussion, um, continuing our discussion about um, proceeding at some point in the future with preparing a comprehensive plan and what items we um, could do to prepare for that process. So, Shirley. Okay, well. And you have charts here. Yeah. It, it, seems to me that over the past five or six months we've received lots and lots of information about town's previous comp plan and action plans and about what um, Colorado Municipal League and DOLA think about comp plans. Um, and a while back, I went ahead and put together information on the action plans in our previous comp plans. Um, but 
but in my mind, the stuff has been the, the what the progress has been real stop and go. And the strong sense I got at our last meeting was that people are going to lots of meetings right now. We're moving into the holiday season, and the likelihood was that we would be starting on the comprehensive plan in a more systematic way in the beginning of 2023. So what you've got in your hands right now is my effort after listening to folks here, talking with Ann, a little bit with David and with Linda, to pull together the information um, about where we are and how it fits in with DOLA and Colorado Municipal League guidelines and a timeline that would have us actually starting on a comp plan for fiscal year 2024. Okay, so there are three tables here. The first one is um, um, from the DOLA and Colorado Municipal League information providing goals for what comp plans should be aiming to accomplish. The second one summarizes um, our current comp plan, which is the 1997 comp plan, along with some information from, um, from the action plans. The third table is the timeline. Okay, um, and I think that what I see this, we could discuss this right now, but my own point is that having compiled the information, it's watermarked draft, um, it's dated, so that when we actually start to pick stuff up in January again, we'll have information if folks want to get me um, additional ideas to add, particularly to the um, table number two, which has major and secondary headings for the different kinds of plans that we've had in the past, I could add that information in a comment section indicating who had suggested it and the date that it got added in so that we would just continue an information gathering um, effort that would add to this, but in the sort of longer run, which is about a two month cycle at this point, we would be aggregating the information we have and be able to, to, to have what compiled this information, not lost it, and then have to spend a month or two in January and February figuring out where we are. So I don't, Linda, I know we, you and I haven't talked this week, so if, if you have different ideas about that, but I just mainly see this as an effort right now at information gathering so that we don't lose ground. Um, if people really want to dive in and get going on this, I'm glad to talk to folks about it and I'll add comments and notes. Um, but I just got a very strong feeling at our last meeting that this was no one's top priority. Um, that there are some immediate things that have to be done that the um, Affordable Housing Task Force is taking a long time. And now we've got sidewalks. <laughs> Actually, sidewalks is something that could fit in here. I was thinking about that. <laughs> I think, well, there's a whole general thing of town appearance. I think what I was yeah. seeing, what I, I think it's been like 20, 25 years since I was on town board and doing a lot of this stuff, but plenty of the same issues keep coming up. Yeah. And so um, I, I just would, would like to see this stuff compiled and, and I think they always will be coming up because of, it's what people see and what, what gets them hot and bothered about stuff. But I sure would like to make sure that the comprehensive plan we put together is as as complete and helpful as the land use code that we now have is. So I'd really like to see them be effective working documents. Um, 
one thing that, um, I mean, I think we have not tended to use the comprehensive plan very well over time. And, um, and the comprehensive plan is essentially supposed to embody the overarching goals and aspirations for the town. Um, the co and then the land use code supports that with code and legal legalese. Um, and I understand that, that, for instance, the town of Durango um, cites something in the comprehensive plan for all of their decisions, they you know point to some place in the comprehensive plan for decisions related to you know development and anything <coughs> like that. So we could potentially um, get a lot of benefit I think. from a good effort, you know, comprehensive effort. So yeah, and I I found as I as I was started working with this that the the goals from that DOLA master plan um, primer, particularly the the idea of balance, um, both in um, economic balance of competing interests and demands, um, and, and things like balance between the natural and the built environment. There are a whole series of issues of balance that um, um, I think are really important and the things that tend to trip us up a, a bit. Like I, I could well imagine if you if you really dug deep into the LED lights and the dark sky initiatives, that there are probably some competing priorities there that just have not been addressed um, until people had to buy blackout shades, which we have in all of our front windows. So um, at any rate, I, I just think that, that I don't know, I, I, I've been impressed at the efforts that um, P and Z and the town board has made to really listen and try to factor some of this stuff into our overall planning documents. So, so I know that the last time this was brought up, I mentioned the fact that one of the last things that was done with the board before this new term. Um, like you showed up. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but like the, the one of the last things we did in my last in the term um, was we were working on this strategic plan, and and uh, Ken said that he didn't find the information because we had gone through a whole mission and visioning process. We found what were what were the priorities and importance of you know. Town and a lot of these ideas around balance came up through that discussion. And I'm wondering if you guys ever got you never saw that it. from him. Okay, and then the other piece was I know that I was like, I came in as an ex officio on the PNZ when you guys were going through the comp plan, the 97 comp plan, and making all those recommendations and, and you know, ideas around looking at that and what needed to be modified and all that. And, and I know that I know that um, the whole idea around. Um, light solution and dark skies was actually in there as one of the recommendations, mm -hmm. and then and we did incorporate it into land use code. But I'm, 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 I'm assuming since you were a driver of that, that was considered in this process as well in terms of coming up with this, you know, looking at how that relates to these. Oh, you mean a review of the comp? Yeah, yeah, review. yeah that's. Review yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So. I mean, we didn't get any details. Right, I know, but like how that how that looks in terms of like because surely has the um, the goals from the DOLA master plan and you know the CML master plan thing. And I was just wondering if you mean as a, as another column potentially? Yeah, like because because there was a process of review mm -hmm. that did happen. It's not mm -hmm. like it's nothing's been done looked at at all. Right. I mean, you know if that was done and actually there was that. Desire to do the comp plan first before land use code, but then yeah. you know, multiple reasons came up as to why that didn't happen. Yeah. But I just, I would like that, that work that you guys did, and I was in on the very end of, to be honored in, in, in this kind of process here. So. I could go ahead and take that on since I love putting things into charts. 
Um, God bless you, Shirley. Sure. That's a weird superpower. Chart lady. Chart lady. And Cyclops. <laughs> So I'll go ahead, and I've got that document, I'll go ahead and get that integrated into a, something aiming at our starting this in a more formal way in January. But I, I, I will report if you want to. That, no, that was, you know, I think, you know. We found that there were a lot of things that were still really pretty relevant. relevant. From that old document. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, right. but there were things that we think thought needed to be changed or, or things that, we, you know, weren't issues back then. Like we didn't have the internet. So people weren't really staying home and working a lot and, yeah. you know, things like that. So how does, you know, balancing. So I would add, while you're starting that out, maybe something that fact that we're not starting over. This, you know, that's the thing we tend to do is forget all the rest of the stuff that we were yeah. playing. So here, we did one in 97, so here's the results, here's what's changed, however you want to do that. I'd say so now, we're moving in, we didn't do it, and COVID, we're moving in. Here's some issues in the same way. Bring people along. Mm -hmm. I think that helped with the land use code was, mm -hmm. you know, here's what's working and here's what's not. We just had that table yeah. put together, and I think that was helpful. Yeah, yep. Yep. I, mean, I will stop like, I don't have any kind of rules for that. That's strategic planning initiative thing that the board could be reviewing. We have that somewhere. We have that developed spreadsheet. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. We should use that. Because I think that there's a lot that would kind of like go into that. And I don't really understand why it ended or what happened. Maybe it was because of the election. Changing of members and stuff, but um, because that was really something that was like important, and we had special meetings with the guy from URA and all that. Um, yeah. And so I, I, you know, we were addressing a lot of these ideas that I see in these goals. Um, in this um, um, well, and the other yeah. piece of this, well, we, we also. You know, have had a series of public input processes for the part for yeah. I, I, yeah, I, I, I would encourage you guys to use those surveys. And so, if to, if you can help you us to. get those together, I was going to ask Shirley since she's going to be integrating information into the <laughs> table. If you could just email Kim and ask him for the strategic plan spreadsheet. Okay, um, I, one thing I would want some guidance on then, and it is. How do the different documents interrelate? Because I know an area of confusion I have is that if you look at any particular, or look for information about any particular topic, you often find bits and pieces in very different places. And um, they kind of don't relate, do they? <laughs> well, yeah. yeah. And that confuses my superpower. Okay, sorry. <laughs> No, but I mean, the, the different things with bits and pieces being in different places and not knowing what has priority. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah. I would be, I'll, I'll email Ken if you and ask him for the strat plan. Yeah, yeah. if you could just look at it and see if it has nuggets for you. And again, I'm not picturing myself coming to any conclusions no, with this stuff. No. I'm just trying to figure out what documents do we have, yeah. what's in them, and then ideally we'll, we'll hire a professional, you know, professional type person who can who can make. Sense. I, I just keep picturing Elizabeth and how, you know, you listen to her and all of a sudden things that were immensely confusing get very clear. She kind of resorts them or, or establishes the appropriate priorities. Mm -hmm. So, but I, I will get in touch with Ken. Well, and then also part of this process will be um, identifying where our holes are yeah. in yeah. outreach yeah. because it's not it's not enough just to do another that. survey. We need to identify who's responding, who's not responding, and if there's a critical element that hasn't responded. 
or hasn't been somehow involved, we need to figure out how to go get their information. So, more active, less passive, so that we can complete the picture of what the residents want. And that's probably one of the topics is the residents, neighborhoods, the jobs, and interests, and all that have changed a lot since. 97, I guess. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But over the, the 20 or so years that the town has been doing this, the emphasis on, you know, probably different people have different things in mind, but the idea of, of the with small town sense of community, the, the rural nature of the community, things like dark skies, um, the issues of historic preservation, um, they always come up. Mm -hmm. And, um, but they're, um, some of them are getting converted into other implementation types of documents, others are not. Mm -hmm. And that then gets to the balancing competing interests and balancing all the things we want to do with our available resources. Well, I'll just keep plugging away. So, primary. So, um, I'm still trying to remember. So, primarily, um, something we can do now as individuals, and then maybe we will do this as a group at the beginning of the process. On the last, the last um, table, the timeline, it says. Um, and the tasks for P and Z in the second column. Yeah. It says review goals, add or delete as necessary. And um, develop comp plan outline with major topics and subtopics. So I kind of I kind of envision that something, those are the two items we will as a as a group we can look at yeah. prior to the hiring of a planner. Yeah. And then um, and so on table number two, um, the second column. Major and secondary headings. Um, that is where we can add. Um, and then the first column actually is goals. And we might have additional goals yes. that we can add to that. And we also might have additional um, headings. The goals are the same goals as in the first the first table too. Those are the, the dola goals. The dola goals. And again, we may want to edit them. I didn't want to edit them. No. I just brought them over to ensure that the things that we were discussing in the um, you know what, the major and secondary headings that they addressed all of the goals that that uh -huh. um, dola had outlined. So those are, I just wanted to kind of alert people to those two particular columns and then the questions on the task and timeline um, as things that we can think about and consider. And then I think it's really when we talk about like, this is, it's pretty complicated. <laughs> there's a lot of stuff. There's a lot there. There's a lot of computer. Um, um, I mean, we can, we can decide how much detail, how much detail we want to go into at a time regarding, um, or not, you know, regarding goals and headings. <laughs> but we're not trying to complete anything before the planner comes into the picture. You know, I, I think, I, I sort of, for me, this was, sort of beginning to get my head wrapped around what both DOLA and CML thought a, a, a comp plan ought to do for a community, then to compare it with what we've done in the past, where what's missing is um, the review that the 
previous PNZ did of the 1997 Conklin. That's an important part. It does need to go into it. And um, then there, there are going to be gaps, but at least we'll know what we've got. And I think all of us have a um, sort of a sense of how well certain things have been working or not. And that probably will, will prompt us to think about additional um, goals or topics that we think need to be addressed in the comp plan. Would there be any value in just initially putting together a, a draft uh, plan, not details, but formatting? I was guessing yeah. that if, if over the course of um, the you know the 2023 calendar year we talked about this, I'm picturing that we would come up with that kind of thing and that in fact we would use it, it probably would get reviewed by some professionals but that we would use it in a grant proposal so that anyone who applied, um, if we received money, the people who gave us the money, us and the people that we would be thinking about hiring, would all be on the same page about what we were producing. So yeah, I do picture us putting together, together a, a, a <coughs> how much detail, I don't know what it would be, but, but an outline for the document that we think we need, and um, then actually budgeting what we think it's going to cost to produce that for the grant proposal. And my only thought of that was just gives you some direction on which way to start working on it. That wouldn't be that hard to initially take a meeting out to break it. Yeah. You know, as I recall, he's also known as the chart guy. Oh. Yes. yes. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> and index. Oh, and definitions. Yeah. Definitions. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> it's very helpful. <laughs> and it's really helpful. Well, yeah, people like you guys. Think like you about <laughs> yeah. So, all right. Um, is that enough discussion on that for now? Okay. I, I would just say again, though, I, I'll continue to work on this, and then, and if for our, and this would, of course, depend on the chairperson's approval, but. Um, if we could at least have an update on our, actually the last meeting this year is December. Yeah. But just update, just to sort of, I, I Keep sort of it see going. it as keeping it yeah. resuscitated. Yeah. So we should have, a, have this on the agenda again in December. And you'll produce that? I'll, yeah, just, you just put it on the, you put, put it, it on, on the agenda. agenda. We'll, we'll, yeah. we'll update where we're at. Yeah. Okay. And if nothing's happened, that may be a really short agenda item. But, but I, minimally, I would try to get the, um, um, the review of the previous comp plan integrated into this in some way. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I appreciate your hard work on that. Yes, and the strategic plan. Mm -hmm. Try to yeah. get those two, two documents. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Your skill set is awesome for this. Scary. It's great. <laughs> and your definitions and your and your indexing will be fabulous with this too. Well, I have to after being with Linda for a couple of days, I can't even remember where we were that this happened. But you you kept calling all these weedy places um um crack gardens. <laughs> Oh no, <laughs> no, it's you know what a crack garden is. No, well, I do not know what a crack no. garden is. Oh, it's and it's a crack. concept. Well, no, it's about all this, all the places in the world, wherever, then paved yeah. with asphalt, and then you see all these little weeds growing in the cracks. And I've been and there are, everywhere. Now. There are people who intentionally plant those cracks. That 
things will grow in that much space. Oh my God, and they put there. flowers in I'm them. Just saying. And they put, you know, and if cool things or herbs. If there's a curb, then yeah. But like, you go by like where I'm at, I got a sidewalk, and then I got parking. <laughs> <laughs> and so even though the, there's the road, yeah. here's the space, yeah. that's parking. Oh, you know? by the way, there's also a, a, a storm sewer drain. You don't have a curb. You don't have a curb. I don't have, I have either. So. I don't have a curb either. I don't have. I well, she have has a sidewalk. I, I do have sidewalk. And the blank spot between the pavement and the sidewalk, which is where the vehicles park. Mm. Yep. On there. So I don't have the plants on there, but it would be run over. Just keep here. Yeah, yeah. No, that's that's it's not like uh, anyway. It's not yeah. your yeah. Yes, so the guy you don't really want to get to. Yes. All right. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. So on to our next item. Um, which is ten. Um, a discussion about. Where we stand with the, the um, our dark sky um, piece of the land use code, actually. It is. It's, it's code now. In there. We also made sure that it was what was written in there was um, not just dark skies, but also the concepts around light like trespass. Light like what? Trespass. 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 Mm. Yeah. And light pollution. Light pollution. We got illustrations in that thing. Exactly. So the very and first the specifics. Thing that out, really yeah, specific measurements. And the first thing that jumped out at me was the cut -off, full cutoff. That was the lighting, any lighting installed, any lighting in town, from the, you know, and, and existing places has to, existing businesses, whatever has two years to come into compliance, but anything new has to meet full cutoff. Full cutoff means that it's only going downwards. Um, and then that whole light trespass, I mean, the fact that um, that one residence is uh, lit up like that is <laughs> obviously that's light trespass. I've been dealing with lighting issues in this town. I had to have blackout in my windows and had, you know, dealing with a business that was doing that. And so now that I was in sense, honestly, to see the, the town doing this in direct violation of something we just talked about. Remember all the little post-it notes, uh, the, big, the big post papers over there? Dark skies. How many green dots did that have? So yeah, I'm incensed, honestly. I think there's several pieces at play with in terms of the um, the lights that are the street lights. Uh, one is, and I had a lengthy discussion with Ken today about it and with David. Uh, one piece is that um, the state has mandated energy efficiency uh, and uh, to all the utility companies. So there is a there is a big pressure for uh, people like Empire to. Uh, coming to compliance with energy efficient lighting. The existing lights that uh, have been in some of those uh, fixtures are no longer being manufactured and available. Um, so that's another piece. Uh, they will be replaced. Um, the spectrum of lighting is different because of some studies that were done that I'm unfamiliar with and um, ignorant of, but they were, they've determined that um, there was a healthier spectrum of light through these LEDs that actually lit, uh, I think, it, according to a luminosity or a lumin luminometer, uh, will project less light in terms of lumens. I think one of the problems is that our perception, because it's a broader spectrum of light, makes it seem like there's actually more light coming out. So I mean, it's whether it's science or perception, I happen to agree that like perception has got to be key. What, yeah, perception is key. Perception is got to be what we go with if it's bothersome. Um, there's a couple of things we can do, I think, with those new fixtures. I've been told that there's almost like a rheostat on them. They go from 0 to 10. And we have no idea what they're set at right now, 
but it's possible they got installed at full volume or 10 of them, and they could be turned down. The other is shielding that can happen around some of those fixtures, which could uh, assist in uh, light trespass or some other things. But I think uh, David mentioned that he was going to go drive around town this evening and with his handy dandy luminositer, or whatever you call that thing, go check the, uh, the light emissions from some of those new fixtures and some of the older fixtures just to try and get some readings. Um, I talked to Tom at the store briefly about it, and so that's why I was curious about it. Um, none of us like to, you know, uh, you lay in bed and feel like we're literally lying under a street light, you know, at night. So I think it's, we've got action steps to move forward in terms of like, let's, let's see what's going on with uh, Empire, if there's other options for different fixtures or different um, bulbs that can go in there, whether they're LED with a different spectrum or something else that's available. I mean, I don't know if they're, you know, uh, hog tied into those, but Dolores is not the only place these fixtures are going into both Cortez and Angus as well. So, um, I think um, there's I, research I, to do and work to do to figure this out for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. No, I, I, I like I I recognize that as being an issue. Mm -hmm. And um, I think we've got action steps to learn more about it, mm -hmm. and maybe we can work with it as it is, and maybe we do need to look at alternatives. We were talking, David and I were talking about like how many fixtures do we actually need? You know, right. The complexity of like if you talk to um, the sheriff's department, it's like all of them, you know, for crimes, sake and safety. Um, and if you talk to, you know, any number of people who are, like, to sleep at night, maybe it's like, a, maybe a fewer uh, number, it's like, maybe the central business district is where we have a higher density of lighting and some of the other areas are not. Also, there's the residential lighting issues that we were talking about with enforcement in terms of dark sky um, and light trespass, light pollution. I think there are a lot of residences that are as, at, at, at least as great a concern with the light issue. So and they have to then they apply and they do need to come into compliance. Yeah. yeah. But I I I I you know going up out of a light meter and saying this this light is okay because it's just as intense as the other Perception is, 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 is <laughs> you're talking about perception and all well, oh, you know about So I have nothing against an LED light. I understand LEDs are much more energy efficient. I know what a light emitting diode is. However, there is no reason for them to be what do what they're doing. It, to me, it violates everything. And I mean, you know, <laughs> it's just wrong. It just you've got it, it's like it looks like an airport. Don't, this is a town of 900 people, approximately. Less if you count all those short term rentals. But anyway, um, you know, there's this town of, it's a small little mountain town that people chose to live here because of certain things, like that darkness at night, like that, it's just maddening that, you know, that. Well, we have, we have, mad. we have. We have an we have an ordinance, so it kind of seems like the stuff that's happening doesn't even follow our ordinance. Exactly. Our, our so, dark sky. So the one go out there, and David's going so to it's going to it, be based on it, there's there's a there's a compliance issue here. So so first of all, let me address that comment. So this I don't do anything by David's opinion. So we have adopted rules and guidelines as we take. There are parameters that are acceptable because they're adopted parameters. And so, as, as, as Mark has alluded to here, um, we're, we have begun an action, we've started taking actions. One of them has not been in contact with Empire Library. So there are five of these new lights in town. Two of the lights are set at four. They go from two to 10. The one that's at Mark's alley is set at two. It's set at the lowest setting it can be set at. 
One of the one of the lights that's on 21st Street is at full intensity, so it's set at eight. So it's two to eight. They can turn them down. These lights are full cutoff lights that the manufacturer indicates that. And what it is, to give you an idea, so if you've got a light fixture that hangs down, a full cutoff means the bulbs are up in the light. That's full cutoff. Because the code requires that at a 90 degree angle to the lowest point on that light, it can only be 10% of light above it. So they meet that requirement. Then at an 80 percent, 80 degree angle, it can only be at 20 percent up. Okay, and so by putting the fixture up inside the light bulbs up inside the fixture, that's a full cutoff light. Now these lights can also they can put additional shielding on them. A shield is um, it, it basically literally a piece of metal that goes behind the light. If this is the light, it literally goes behind the light like this on the residential side. So it still shines out into the street and down to the street. Um, so there's so there's some options. I'm working with Empire right now on this, and as Mark alluded to, this was a directive that was passed by the governor of Colorado. So the, the power companies are, are they're kind of in a position here where they don't have a choice. So they are required to be compliant with by 2024 at 70% of energy savings on street lights. So this is this is statewide. Um, Empire did a, a, a very in-depth study on these lights. I don't have all the details on that yet. I do have the study, but I have not had time. I literally started looking at this today. So yeah, the, the, the thing I read was, it was in the email. Or yeah, something so about and I believe Ken sent it out to, the, to, to everybody. Um, and so I'm working with Empire on that. Um, I'm going to go around tonight, and I'm going to take my light meter to these five locations, and I'm going to take the reading at the light, and I'm going to take the reading across the street at the light pollution area. And so that's how the, the code says that I have to take a reading under the light, and that has to be within a certain parameter, and then I have to take a reading at the, 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 the offended property, is what it's called, at the property line. And so, if it falls within a certain parameter, it meets the requirements for dark sky initiative. And dark sky, so it's as long as the, the fixture is fully cut off, and they are fully yeah. cut off. Yeah, these these new fixtures are what they call full cut off fixtures, and that's because the light bulbs themselves are up in the fixture. So, and, and so I had a, I had a discussion at the senior center this this week. Um, about the lights. And so I asked somebody, I asked everybody in the room what they thought dark skies meant. And I literally had two or three people say dark skies means no lights, period. And that's not what dark skies means. Dark skies is light pollution up. That is why we put in the additional thing in the code about light trespass and light pollution because the ordinance was very clear that dark skies means not putting light up. Just not enough. However, this is this is light trespass, okay? If somebody has to put blackout coverings on their windows, then I think there's some trespass happening. So and so, like I said, we are <clears throat> the town didn't do this. This is not the we did not decide to do this. We are not the ones putting these lights in, okay? Empire Electric owns these lights. They put these lights in. They did not consult with us or talk with us before they did this. So we are literally in the investigatory stage of this of this issue, and we are working actively. Um, we are taking action towards solutions of this, and we're coming up with different solutions. So, one of the solutions that I've talked with Empire about is turning the lights down, um, residential shielding, and and. Um, Maybe there's other alternatives as well. Turn some off. Yeah. So, uh -huh. and then Mark and I have talked about looking at lights. For example, there's a light on 8th Street, the intersection of 8th and Central. There's one at 7th and Central, and now there's one in the alley between 7th and 8th, and that's one of the new ones. That light's always been there, but it was not operable because the light was defective. So they put, that's why they replaced it. It was one of the older lights and they replaced it. 
So now that light is on, and it's one of the new lights. So there's literally a light at the street corner at 8th, in the alley between the two streets, and at 7th. So there's literally three lights within 300 feet. So that's not something that we can look at. We're going to look at it as far as lighting. You know, what is required? What is required by code? What's required for safety? Um, what's required for Empire as far as service for their lines? All of that stuff. We'll, we were, we're really just in the very beginning stages of this. And we are taking every action we can to look at this. So you, we can expect an update? Yes. Next month or our next meeting, which when which would be December, unless uh, we're not having a second meeting this month, are we? Is there any reason to? No, okay. So to the go ahead. I went around looking at the lights the other evening. Um, if if the light behind Tom and Mark's is at two, that's unbelievable. Yeah. We're in really big trouble because the other option is zero, and that would be turning turning it off because it is blinding. And I don't care if you say that they're recessed up into the little hood. You look up at those new LED lights, you are blinded. I did it. I looked up at the old one that I could function, but I could not looking up. So. Uh, you know, in order to, to have any no trespass, you're going to have to have a shield that drops down about halfway to the street. I mean, these are so obnoxious. And you know what? I'm really sick and tired about what Empire has to say. I mean, shut them off. Who needs lights? We can all do sensor lights if we're that afraid of what's going on. But, I, you know, something else. A lot. Maybe Empire needs to figure out something else because these lights and, you know, really doesn't matter what your little gadget's going to say. They're too bright. Two, number two is too bright. I have a light that shines out of my kitchen window. I, the tree, and it's, it's like three blocks away. It hit me like a beacon the other night. And it's behind a tree with leaves still on it. I can't wait until that tree drops its leaves. And then if you go down to the one at the school district, and that's a, that's a great comparison right there. There's one on the corner of the school district and one right across the street from the proposed new town hall. LED and orange. The school district is blazing. I mean, it is so brightly, brightly lit. But you look at the other building, it's lit, but it's tolerable. It's not intrusive. I find a lot of street lights just intolerable as they are, personally. Well, I mean, they, I I mean it's like you're shining in my bedroom. Turn off this one. We're going to have this one off, or this one. Then, who, who, you know, then you're going to have the light. Oh, this person gets to have the light on the other one. This one doesn't have to. So how do you decide whose that is? And then um, if you look at these street, the lights that are around the this property, the, just green. the green ones, yeah, those are dark sky lights. Those are what Ridgeway has on all their street lights. So they don't have, you know, part of the reason you're saying this is a full cutoff, but it's way up in the air. Yeah. So that doesn't the height. make a difference. It doesn't, it doesn't help. So, you know, I, I, you know, like I said, Somebody has to be, if people have to be putting a blackout covering in their windows, then there is a problem, no matter what anybody says. No matter if it meets the letter of the law, it doesn't meet the intent. Where are we with monitoring and enforcing generally that our dark sky ordinance? The way we do all our enforcement. Which is, we'll explain. I, okay, I'll complain again. <laughs> you no, know, I mean, we're looking at all the areas of enforcement right now. Everything from weeds, trash, and derelict vehicles to dark sky and lights and stuff like that. Um, the process is that a lot of our, our uh, guidelines are pretty vague. 
and they have to be quantifiable to be enforceable. And so, un unfortunately, you know, perception doesn't is like not a reliable metric to enforce the code. That's kind of the like the good and the bad and the ugly is like um, sometimes the tool how is, people is, feel. Right. I yeah. mean, I'm sorry that your feelings are hurt, and yeah. um, like there's nothing I can do until we reach this point where this little gadget says this is the wrong thing, or somebody identifies this is a noxious weed, or you know this vehicle has been out of code and out of date, or you know in your yard for X number of days. It's we're we're working towards specificity in that mm -hmm. because there's so much wiggle room within. The notion of uh, the those codes and nuisances that it could mean anything to any they're person. They're impossible to enforce. Yeah. Um, and so it's something that we're we're working on. It's it's a, it's a struggle. However, the, the the dark sky ordinance does have some very specific things in it, and there are plenty <coughs> of places in town that aren't compliant. There there are and. You know, it's very specific. Yeah. We are sensitive to the fact that we are a small town and that, like, people, if, if people come to us with concerns, we're upset. Like, we're certainly, you know, we, we're reactive. We are, you know, in terms of listening to um, and looking at the problems in ways and, you know, requesting other. Uh, so uh, you're talking on behalf of the board, numbers. is that it? Sorry? You're talking on behalf of the board? Yes. So the board is well, the taking board, on... The board is looking at enforcement right now okay. in all these areas. And so, like I said, we're, we have to kind of pick apart what, we've, what we have written down because a lot of what we've got is too vague to actually enforce anything. And the other side of it is how far do we go? Right now we have um, a piece in the, in the code that says that you know, where there's a five hundred dollar a day fine for infractions after certain you know limits have been met. It's like sending letters. We send a certified letter. We get John Kelly involved. Then you know, and then we're upping the ante into like now we gotta get sheriff involved in the court or we're gonna put a lien on a property. Things get you know, all these things are considered when starting to think about how enforcement works. Um, and David's had great success success this year with just, you know, a, a mostly friendly letter as a reminder that, hey, you know, your weeds are out of, out of hand or this car needs to be moved or a code. Um, and I can't remember exactly the compliance figures, but they were up around 60, 70, almost 80 percent. Yeah, some of the issues are 70 percent. 60 for most of them, 60 percent. Could have been resolved. Do what? Could have been resolved. Yes. Coming yeah. the compliance line. So, that's hardening, you know. Um, some people just will not answer or refuse to answer. So you don't know if they're, you know, they may be absent, they may not, you know, we don't know all these things. But um, as the as the representative here of the board, I can assure you that we're looking at all those pieces. And compliance is something that um, can get overwhelming pretty quickly, especially if it's not defined as to what, what we're trying to. I'm specifically going to mention the um, lighting at the um, senior housing over here and the lighting at the, the um, community center. Mm -hmm. Light goes way out. It's not down. It's been like that. Nothing changes. Well, if it was existent before the, the codes, the, they have two years yeah. to get into the flood. Are you talking about the new white one? Or the new lights? <laughs> I haven't paid attention to the new white one. Is that a town light, an empire light? Um, or is it? I'm talking about the lights on, in, that those two compounds have on their buildings or in the sidewalk areas, which are shine way out. And, yeah. and they're not down this. They're like security lights. Like they're, a, and a, the property that's up by itself in the world that would have a light pole with a light on it that looks I don't like know. It's, it's, it's just noxious. Behind the senior, <coughs> the senior housing. Mm -hmm. Um. So on Fourth Street, there's there's no lighting, but the folks that live on the alleyway 
and then it would be Lena's house, and I live right next door. They have two lamp posts. For their parking lot or something. For their, you know, whatever. We're afraid. I don't know. Um, but they have two lamp posts, and they were both orange. Well, one that's right next door to me got replaced over the weekend, I guess. Oh, dear. And now it's this lovely white LED light that shines into my home. So is that, is that? No, it's no, no, it's compound. And oh, then, it's and then the other one is still orange. And um, yeah, the, 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 it's, the, 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 I mean, it's tolerable. They've the, both been tolerable over the years, but now the, for you, um, it's not. So now I get to call senior housing and go, hey, I guess you need to like spray paint it or something because it's I mean, coming it's, into my. My life. I mean, now. even if they were orange, they came from coming to my, you know. <laughs> But, so yeah. I'll, I'll, so, I'll drive by and take a look at those as well. I mean, uh, it's. I mean, I understand they have some time to come into compliance, but, but if they've just changed it, but if it's just if changed. nothing so, has happened, so, so they don't way, know. There's no or, way anybody could be. You know, there's no way that anybody can find every single compliance thing in the stand. It's not going to happen. Well, those there's are pretty so obvious. Many so many <laughs> those are big and <laughs> obvious. <laughs> I don't live in this town. So, you, because exactly. it affects you. So, yeah. I live out of town. But I've mentioned it before, so it doesn't so, matter. And I have followed up on everything that's been mentioned to me, every single thing. And so I've done some without even being mentioned. For example, the motel. They put new lights on the motel, and they were shining down the damn highway. I pull, I literally was blinded the first night that I came back from Montezuma going home. And I pulled in and told them, you've... You've got to turn these things down. So they had their electrician come back the next day, remounted them so they were facing down. They are dark skies compliant, but they were shining right down the highway. <laughs> and then they were shining right out of the room down central. I mean, it was it was like an airport runway. It literally was. So I addressed that. I'll go look at these and see. If they're not compliant, I'll tell them, you've got to make these compliant. Um, and like I said, I'm just in the beginning stages of dealing the street lights. So I will follow up with more reports um, to the board and, and to you as well. And like I said, we are looking at it collectively and determining what's going on there. I have I, I have very limited information right now. I do know that I've done quite a bit of research today on those lights. They do meet dark skies compliance and they are full shielded. So I, I don't design that, I didn't write that requirement, but they meet that requirement. So And there might be alternatives. Don't yeah. know yet. Don't know. This is weird. Literally today was the first day that I worked on this. I have not had time until today. So, so is there a way to have them not do any more until this is more researched and, and mm -hmm. more like, I, I don't Can we I'm say can ask. you stop now, right now, until we you know, don't replace any more at this until we figure out what's going on and what we can do to. Or maybe you know, one thing is to turn off how many you could figure out which how many can just be turned off for now. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's one way to. Oh, it's too much light. That's what I'm saying. Is like, is there a way to say let's let's not that just keep going off. with it until we get it? You know. Well, one of the things that I'm going to do is record because we have one street light that's at full capacity. So I'm going to go take measurements on that one, plus the ones that are at low capacity. And then I'm going to work with Empire to see if we can't get additional shielding put on that light and turn them down to the lowest setting so that I can get a good reading and then I can compare it. Here's what it is at 8, here's what it is at 2, here's what it is with shielding. Um, here's what the light trespass is on the property with shielding, without shielding, and then I can have those as those are hard, those are not opinion, they're not feeling based, they're they're hard, fast figures that you can look at. You can say this this light, and, and then also you can determine that this light meets this requirement, and you can go look at it and say this light meets requirement and Whatever, you know, I mean, if you look at it as far as light trespass on an opinion based thing, but like Mark said, we cannot enforce, enforce opinion. It will be tossed right out of court. I'm not talking about, I'm talking about lights that are not down lights, period. 
That's the main thing. They're not downloads at all. And, then, and, that, and that's not opinion. That's well, a fact. Yeah, at, at the community center. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and at this. Place. Yeah, I don't know. I haven't seen them, so I'll go look at them tonight. So it's well, the same thing at like the dollar store. Mm -hmm. I mean, when they started, they you know, for being yeah, out, and they, they blast yeah, across the river, that. and they still were blasting right in the mic. Mm -hmm. And we didn't have the ordinance at the time, and I mean, we were we were fighting that the whole. It's finally better, but yeah. Sometimes and that it's that better. that electric bill was paid by the town of Dolores, correct? To Empire. Mm -hmm. so we paid, but we paid mm -hmm. for street light. Okay. Mm -hmm. so, so I guess the other. Sorry. <laughs> I was just going to say the one thing you mentioned about the shielding so that would be the light. You know, so that's assuming that that. You know, so like you, you, you had your picture, like here's the light, it would be behind the light, so that it would, you know, so that you're assuming the residence is over here, but that one on central, if you put it behind the light, it's just projecting it more onto Gary's house. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, the, it's protecting this side, but it's pushing this inward, not pushing it. I mean, it's, it's going to be, it's going, the light on this side of the street is impacting this side of the street. Is what Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hmm. I guess all I was going to say too is that if you're going to study the type of lighting, is I still think I think you mentioned earlier, is that is there a need for the other new lighting? It's there. Is there really a need to have the light there in the first place? Correct. Yeah, I think that's right. That's and then you know how and then how far it. away does this light travel? That's the trespass. The trespass. Well, that's but, um, right. And but in a dark also. town, a, lo a little light is going to be seen very bright in a very dark town. Well, and, and so one of the sites that I was on talked about 10 miles away on a perfect atmosphere in a perfect setting, you can see a match. Okay? That is not like trespass, even though you can see it. And it will not read. There's not a reader on this planet that will read that light reading. Okay? And so they use that as an example of what is like trespass. Just because the human eye can see it doesn't mean it's trespass. It's a measurable amount of light at the property line. And those are defined in the Institute of, of Lighting and Human Areas Society. There's, there's a group of people that come up with these rules and guidelines. I get it. And the light is reflecting <laughs> off of somebody's <laughs> house. So the point that you can see it from the highway, the block, two blocks, whatever you want to call it, away, <laughs> then that's a problem. I don't care what, you know, you're, you know, if you want to say, well, it's comparative, you know, because we're a small little dark town. And so therefore it's, it seems brighter. It doesn't matter because what matters is that people are having to put in black out block coverings on their windows. That's Tell you the problem. Well, we're, we're working on it. When, so. when you're out driving around tonight, stop on the highway in front of the Mountain Inn and look at Gary's house on Central, a block away. I mean, from the highway, and I took a photo. It is lit like Christmas. And that's one block away. So, so just just so you get a, get an idea of um, you know because we don't want to be emotional or anything like that. But, you know, it's, it's gonna take it's gonna take time. It's lit up. It's gonna take time, and it may not be resolved before you know as soon as would make Gary comfortable. Yeah. Well, you know what? I'm talking about the whole town, and I like Linda and Melissa's idea of let's just shut them down or stop until some further investigation happens. We don't need any more spotlights going up. It is damaging to people's health. It is damaging in, to environmental health. Damaging to birds, dam damaging to pollinators. Um, we don't have turtles around here, but baby turtles, you know, get confused at beaches where there's too much light and they go the wrong way. They don't go to the ocean. So there's there's a lot of good reason, and I know in my profession. Um, there's always a little bit of research on safety stuff. And so I would, before 
just believing that more light is better for safety reasons, I would you know, recommend looking into that as well, because there's a balance. There's a, there's a balance for that, where it doesn't have to be nearly as bright as um, people might suggest it has to be the brightest you can get on the shelf. I don't think that's, I don't think that at, at a certain point it doesn't prevent more crime. But you want your pedestrians to be fairly safe. Fairly safe. Yeah, um, yeah but it doesn't mean a really it, bright it, light. It, it, it doesn't have to be daylight. The, the lights that you have no. now, you can safely ride your bicycle on the streets. You can cross the streets. Like the lights that we have now, I mean, you can't. You'd have to be a total idiot if you're going to be out at night and walk in front of a car. Sometimes you have to be out in the middle of the night. There might be a work-related reason or, you know, that you don't have a light on your own bike or your own Jeep. Well, I think, I think the concern is really valid of too much light in the town. So, but I'm just saying, and, and, and I think the as concern is... And a bicyclist who sometimes rides at night or in the morning, in the early morning before light, that the street lights are, are adequate, but there are places where I can't be seen by a vehicle because I am not in the light. Do you I have lights dark. on your bike? I do. I have flashing good, lights good. on my bike. Good. But say I don't have them, but I still need to go somewhere. I mean, an adequate light would keep a vehicle from seeing me too late, possibly. I think I'd love it if this was a really simple fix. Yeah. I think there's a lot of, there's, it's a little more complex than I wish it was. Well, I don't want to advocate for spotlight, yeah, for floodlights at all. I'm not advocating for that. And certainly, one person at a time, please. Yeah. You know, as, as, as well as I can do as a representative of the council, it's like, I know that we'll be talking about this. And I know that, you know, David will be looking at it and we'll be, you know, I'm aware, I, I don't like street lights at all. I, I much rather live in a completely dark town. You know, it's like, let us, you know, there are other pieces at play. Sea Dog has a stay. Mm -hmm. um, oh, they're, um, on, the, they're on the highway, right? And there's, you know, maybe there are good reasons to have uh, the central business district well lit by comparison to you know, more residential areas. But I mean, I'm not, I'm not the guy who's making the rules. I'm just, I'm saying we're here to learn, and it's not. There are a lot of pieces in play. But certainly, I, I feel like yeah, the, the new light fixtures are something that we're all curious about investigating as to like you know, are there alternatives in terms of like can we turn them off or are there other fixtures or are there things we can do within these fixtures to make them work for us? I have to look that one up because years ago we were told that our business had to be dark by eleven. <laughs> now everyone's talking about. Turn lights on in the commercial area. So, yeah, I'll have to do some research on that one. What the new code is. <laughs> so speaking about that, without continuing too much further, isn't the code that close to being all the typos and whatever the one that's looking on? The only thing that thing's going to be final. Where you put it on the line. Completely amended for the new cleanup ordinance and then um, polished and numbered, you know, all the numbering page numbers and everything put in. Do you have any idea of, I mean, it would be really great if we could get hard copies. <laughs> like this came up and I was thinking, I would like to be able to go to my book today and read. You know right. about the dark sky or the desire. Okay, but, but it's, it's moving forward. It is moving forward, but we don't really have a okay. timeline. But we're um, we are going to be um, moving forward with the Lisbon Ordinance and that sort of thing. All right, ready to adjourn? It's eight. Oh, and then we'll just uh, so the next meeting we'll want an update on 
um, what's going on with Dark Sky stuff. Yep. I'm and we'll also list. want to update, do an update on the comprehensive plan I've got that preparation I've got that activity. And we'll figure out whatever else needs to be on there later. If there's any applications or anything we have to deal with. Or code. Okay. Housing. Oh, maybe we'll have some more, we'll have more information on the housing. That should be interesting. All right. Let's adjourn. It's 824. Thanks, everybody. Thank